Welcome from, to the Dr. Vibe Show, live from the worldwide offices in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and from Texas tonight, <laughs> Dallas, Texas tonight. Yeah. We're speaking at You Are Blessed, Highly Favored, A Magnet for Miracles and a Solution for Someone's Problem. You've got Dr. Vibe here on one side, and we have a special guest with a wonderful smile on the other side. Hello. And, hello. <laughs> It's all good stuff. And if you want to touch base with us tonight, Twitter at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. Also Twitter at Mind of a Diva. Yeah. And that's the way to get a hold of us tonight. And we're speaking, you're blessed and highly favored. You're, listening, you're watching and listening to the Dr. Vibe show, the only show that is a regular broadcast on the Good Men Project. But tonight... It's the Mind of the Divas project tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and we're so blessed and highly favored to have Jen Baker from Dallas, Texas, who hosts a wonderful site, Mind of a Diva. We're going to be chatting about that tonight. We're going to be chatting about her tonight. But more importantly, we're also going to be chatting about her campaign against breast cancer. So we'd like to welcome to the video airwaves, Jen Baker, Mind of a Diva. How are you? Hello. How are you? Blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. Fired up and jacked to have you on the show tonight. And thank you for taking the time out of a productive and blessed schedule to share with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about this and just very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. And I know you have a lot of followers and I know they're just going to be blasting away on Twitter tonight. So I hope they're blasting away and they fill up both our Twitter streams. So, so we can't even concentrate about sharing with each other. So it's all, yes. good. it's all good. Well, as we like to do customarily on the show, can you share a little bit about yourself? Well, um, I'll start out with me and then I can start out with my Nivediva and tell you a little bit about the website. But um, I am born and raised in Dallas, from Dallas, Texas. Um, one of three kids, so I'm the oldest. I got two younger brothers and uh, graduated from Texas State down in San Marcos. So shout out to all the Bobcats out there. <laughs> Um, and now I have this wonderful site after I graduated from uh, Texas State, got my bachelor's in mass communications in English, and then uh, after praying about what I want to do as far as journalism, because that's always been my passion, I decided, well, you know, I want to do blogging because at the time blogging was a new median in, uh, in journalism, and I wanted to definitely spend some time doing it since that's what part of my studies was, and I prayed on it. What can I do that would be meaningful writing? And um, after maybe a year of praying about it, um, God just spoke to me and told me to write about my own experiences, write about the stuff that I see going on around me and what I think. And I was like, okay, I can do that. So um, then it was, well, what do I name it? <laughs> I, I could write about it, but it has to have a name to it. And um, I'm a big uh, Beyonce fan. And so I was listening to her album that just came out at the time, which was I Am Sasha, Sasha Fierce. And she had a song on there called Diva. And I was listening to the album and that song was playing. And then I said, that's it. Mind of a Diva. Okay. <laughs> you know, you stole one of my questions for you. Because, you know, and I'm sure everyone asks you, how did you come up with that name? So there you go. So uh, is Beyonce getting any royalties or anything? Or, uh, I, I think... or do you want royalties from her? <laughs> right. I think I think if she I think if she heard she would want uh, royalties from me because she would want to you know. But no, I think that um, I don't have any any way to contact Beyonce, or I would probably be talking to her all the time. But <laughs> but yeah, she just her her album inspired inspired the name of the site and. Um, and some of, actually, some of the articles, some of her songs and 
her her story has inspired that. So good stuff. Well, I want to get a little bit of your story growing up in Dallas, Texas. You're the oldest. Mm -hmm. You're the girl, but you have two younger brothers. Yes. How yes. was that growing up in that sort of situation, being the the uh, oldest? being the girl that's oldest, what was school like? What was education like? What was growing up like? Um, for, well, with my, with two brothers, my brother that is right underneath me, we are five years apart. So uh, when he was born, I, I remember being very excited about, about it. And I also remember uh, being wondering like, why, why won't he play? <laughs> Uh, when they brought him home, because my parents brought him home, and I remember, you know, we, my dad and I decorated, and we were excited. Play with, play with me. <laughs> I thought he was supposed to be like my new playmate. I had to get adjusted to a new sibling and learning that they're not going to instantly start playing with you and, and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, in school, um, I think when I started out in school, I wasn't, uh, big on it. Like I liked, maybe I liked the social part of it. Definitely was one of those kids that loved recess. Um, but I slowly got really interested in school. Um, and the nice thing about when I was in school was that we had, uh, take your daughter to work day. So I went to work with my dad and he worked for, at the time for a company that uh, has, um, that owned a news station and a newspaper. So um, when I would go with my dad to work, he would take me, uh, we would hang out in his office and then we would go to lunch and he worked in downtown Dallas. So we always got to go to, to one of the restaurants on the West End which was usually a spaghetti warehouse because I love, I love Italian food and I love, um, I love the fact that they had the trolley inside of the restaurant. Okay. So we found out a secret about you. You're a lover of t Italian food. So if you want to get on, on Mind of a Diva's good side, go, <laughs> go Italian. Go Italian. Italian and sweet. That's, that's the key. <laughs> Pasta food and sweets for the sweet smile. I'm all yeah. over that. <laughs> so, so I I uh, I was very um, very much into into that stuff, and then at the end, my dad would so around the time they would start filming the six o'clock news. Um, I remember going down to uh, first we would see the presses going at the newspaper, and then we would go over to the news station. And we would get to see our um, everybody running around, um, getting ready for the five, for the six o'clock news, and so that was just really cool to me because I, I they had all the clocks on the wall, you know, of uh, of the different time zones. I got to see the green screen that the, they do the weather. I got to see the desk. Uh, everybody's everybody's desk inside the newsroom and I just knew I was like this is what I want to do and so um, I was just so excited about all that stuff and just love doing that <laughs> you know what mind of diva you're gonna make me work tonight because you just stole another one of my questions saying where did this love of journalism come from but obviously it was mm -hmm. your your father how long is your father still involved in the media, and how long, if he isn't, how long was he involved in media? He's not anymore. Um, he he moved on and now works for another company, an oil company. Um, I'm trying to remember how long he worked there, and I don't, I don't know. Before I was. Before, before I started to have a, a memory <laughs> of things, and you're I not, think, uh, yeah, I'm not of a diva. You're not that old, and this, <laughs> there's two things I don't deal with with ladies. Wait, so I'm not going any further on that subject. So <laughs> I'll, I'll say uh, maybe somewhere, um, maybe somewhere in two 
in the 2000 area did he okay. he moved on to another company after that um and so he was there for a for a while right mm -hmm. i what now interesting was he the only black person at the station at that time well he worked he worked for the company that owned on okay. the station um but even so still even, in that even in that environment was he there i'm thinking that there wasn't too many people of color there wasn't um yeah. i know that in thinking about it there might have been i know that him and two other guys that he that worked in his department um i think there might have been it was him there's two other guys i think there were maybe two women on his on his floor on the floor that my dad worked on that I can remember. Um, so, so it was very interesting. And my dad, and of those people, my dad was the, was the only manager. He was the only one in a management position. Wow. Yeah. And now at the, com at the company he's at now, um, it was a, a similar, similar thing. Uh, he is, I think maybe the highest, uh, minority manager. So, so your father sort of could would it be right to say he's like a barrier breaker or a trailblazer wherever he goes. He is. I I'm so inspired by well my mom and my dad uh, because of everything that they've done. My dad working as hard as he has um, and getting here. He he's from my both of my parents are from Mississippi um, and worked very hard to, to get where they are. Um, they just celebrated their anniversary actually not too long ago. So that's really exciting. How many so years? Uh, 32. Congratulations to them. That's outstanding. Yes. So very, very fun to see that. And just, that's like a whole nother conversation with how inspiring it is to see that, uh, them as far as a marriage and a relationship. But um, yeah, I'm, a story that that my dad likes to share with us is that um, in Mississippi at the time when he was he uh, went to school he graduated early went to college um, and for computer I believe computer science might have been his major and when he graduated um, it was very hard for him to find um, find a job that fit what he was doing um, because at the time there was racism, especially in Mississippi. And so uh, he would get interviews, but they wouldn't hire him because he was black. And my dad and my mom were newlyweds. And he, so he knew that in order to support his family, he had to do something. And he started applying outside of the state and um, got a job at Texas Instruments in Dallas. And um, from, from there, moved him and his and my mom uh, away from their families because both of them lived in Mississippi. Uh, moved them away from their family and into uh, Dallas, which they weren't familiar with. And from there, just, um, you know, that that was it. We've, we've been in Texas ever since. So um, I just found that very inspiring that the way that they were, had the courage and the faith in God to take that lead uh, to Mississippi, uh, to leave Mississippi and move to Dallas and um, and do that together, especially Fantastic. as newlyweds. Fantastic. You've shared a lot about your father. I almost want to, I'd love to meet your father to get him on the show because I'm sure he has a number of inspiring stories and evaluated oh, yes. that would be enriching for our, our audience. Share a little about your mother because you've been so wonderful in sharing about yeah, your your dad and and it's interesting because a lot of times when I ask guests, especially blacks, about mm -hmm. they always talk about mom, mom, mom. But you let off with your father, which is inspiring because the theme of this show is for black men and those that love them. So I appreciate you leading, and nothing against mom, nothing yeah. against mom. But, uh, <laughs> share share a little about your mother with us. Yeah, I love mom too. I'm de I'm a uh... As the only girl, I think I'm more, I'm kind of a, a daddy's girl in a way, but I'm my mom is my best friend. We were actually out today. She went with 
hung out with me and then we did some shopping and so um definitely have a great relationship with my mom and um I just love what I love most about her well I mean there's a lot of things I love but one of the things I love most about her is that how she is so family oriented um especially on my mom's side of the family um she just uh she between me and my brother she has to talk to us every day <laughs> and she wants to know what's going on in our life and she always has something funny inspiring and my mom's one of those people that will talk to her about a problem and she's like you just gotta don't worry about other people just do what you need to do you know just focus on you and um and with some of the with the website with uh with writing she um she just she supports everything and anything that we do and 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 ask about it you know she will sit there and say hey what what is what are you doing with what are you doing with this now or how's that going and i just love having that support and that backing from her nice when now if i understand correctly you took journalism in college is that correct I uh, I went to Texas State, uh, which is about thirty minutes south of Austin, um, and and uh, and studied journalism, studied English, which I was so happy about. Um, and college was another thing. The, and to relate back to my parents real quick, um, growing up in da Dallas and. Austin are about four hours away from each other and so um, when I was looking at schools to go off to I was like okay I want to go to school I don't really want to stay in Dallas because I feel like I've kind of have done my Dallas thing and so I wanted to go off somewhere and um, my friend told me about Texas State and I applied and then I got in and I was very excited but the thing that I liked most about it um, is that she is that the school was far away and so I would have to stand on my own two feet in order to make it because I wasn't gonna have my friends there I wasn't gonna have mom and dad there so it was gonna be just Jennifer having a, um, as they say you gotta wash your own clothes you gotta handle your own problem <laughs> you won't have mom and dad there to clean it yeah, up for you yeah, as one of my regular contributors on the show Henri Morris said so you had the time for knuckle up and buckle up right right and that would be that would that was my whole thing and so um, I think what a lot of what gave me courage especially during the times when I was like I don't know if I can do this was saying well my mom and dad moved from one state to a completely different state that they didn't know and they handled it so I can do this Nice. Um, so I just kind of drew that inspiration from them and um, and yeah I just I, I loved it I loved yeah I'm a, by that time I was very big in school I was so I loved going to class I loved studying I loved taking notes I loved writing papers I was the weird kid in class that when the teacher <laughs> said to write a paper I was just like there cheering I was like yes write a paper oh my gosh and then I and then I was so that made me weird. Part one, part two was that I would that I would um, come to class the week that the paper was due, and I would ask the teacher. I'd be like, um, "Can the paper? I know you said that the paper has to be three pages long, but mine's like five. Is that okay? Will you still take it?" And the teacher would be like, I'm like, Jennifer, I told you this last time, try to trim it down. I was like, no, I, I want to trim it down, but see, I want to, like, there's so much information I still want to keep in there. So is there a way to, to kind of get past it somehow? And she was like, okay, three and a half, and that's it. <laughs> and then the third part would be, that the teacher would use my paper as an example for the following year or for the class nice. for the class nice. after she graded it. So she would. So my teachers love to keep my stuff. You know Maybe. how much of that's a huge blessing. 
Yes, that was. And and it was just great because I love that. I felt because when you find your passion, you find your niche like that, it just amps you up. Um, and high, in high school, I was a part of the yearbook uh, team. That's when I really got started getting into journalism is because we had a journalism program at my high school. You stole another question of mine. I was going to ask where the, where did this where did this <laughs> love for journalism come? But your book, wow! Uh, okay. I'm stealing all your I'm stealing all your questions tonight. Well, that's all right. That's okay. And you know what? I don't mind you. Te- I don't mind you teething from me. That's all right. That's all and right. I got I got a fun little thing I found or my mom found for me. So I'm, so I'm, let me see if I can get this all on camera. Yeah, there it is. So United States, what? So that so this is. Okay, explain that. You just can't put it up there and just so, dash oh, it away. What yeah. is that all about? So I was um, awarded, and I don't know, I don't know if the award is still in here because I can't. I'm not sure because we just found this. We were cleaning out the attic and just found this, and I was like, where did that come from? And so um, I was awarded, one, I'm, I'm listed in this book of United States Achievement Academy, uh, 2002 National Awards. And so what they do is they pick, the school picks students that they think are going to do just amazing things in, drama, in different fields. It's not just dr- journalism. So um, these are fields, uh, let's see here, dance team, football, journalism, physical education, speech and drama, um, band. Um, And then what they do is they do like pictures and little bios of everybody. So this is my, so this is my section. I'm trying trying to again reach, put it all in there. So journal, so journalism, uh, Oh, this is Keepers massive. of information. What? And, this, oh, this is fantastic. Congratulations. I, I forgot that this happened. I was so okay, Hold stunned. on. You, you forgot receiving a presidential <laughs> award. Your, I, life is just, your life is just too much for us, young lady. <laughs> telling you, I get a presidential award and I forget about it? <laughs> I, it oh, yeah, okay. It was... It was like I remember my my mom buying the book. I remember getting the award in the mail, and it was signed by, um, by the president and everything. And I was just like, "Oh my gosh, he knows my name!" And um, I remember it happening. But then, like we just pulled this out, maybe beginning of this year or something like that. And I was like, "What is this? Who?" And then I opened it up. I was like, "Oh my gosh." I forgot about that, and it really it's really amped me up. I keep it in my room now because every time I I start getting down or about something, then I just look at it and I'm like, hmm. but here I'm gonna point point out my picture. I'm gonna bring back like me in the '90s. <laughs> so here I well, am, you're, right? You're, you're real bold, aren't you? No, I'm gonna shut up <laughs> so you can see this. So there I am, right there with the bangs and everything. Wow. Wow. Now, did you plan on pulling that out tonight? I, I actually didn't plan on it. I, it actually just kind of came to me while we were talking. I was like, oh, yeah, about high school. So um, I just thought about it just now. And I was like, wait, that book is right here next to me. So um, thank I you. Thank you it. so much for sharing that. Well, you know what? That's one of the reasons why. I love doing this. I just allow you, allow the guests to share and bring out things that just impromptu just come out. So for you to share that with me, myself, my audience, I appreciate it. Don't take it for granted. So thank you. Oh, for thank you. That. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty fun. I don't, I haven't shown very many people that book because I kind, like I said, I just kind of came across it again, and um, I was thinking to myself too, I need to find all my yearbooks because um, being on the on your, in yearbook and being, I was in my senior year, I was an editor for the yearbook. So doing that, I need to show people, you know, all those layouts I used to do and everything. You know, so. It's, it's so important because you need to show people, document your history. Right. Right. It's very important. And you being a writer, you can understand that documentation. And I myself being a, a broadcaster, Hi, is that the birds in the background? Okay. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, 
but uh, I was I was looking around. I was like, wait, the birds are still out. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, so it's so important to document your history. So again, thank you so much for doing that, Mike. Yeah. President, I, I'm going to remember that line for the rest of my life, though. I forgot that I received a presidential award. That you know what? <laughs> that's that's money. That is so money. Don't want your mom to. Uh, I don't. Want, I don't want your parents to watch us now. They're gonna say you what? <laughs> you know, how did I mean it's gonna be like how did you forget? Like yeah. the book the book has been in the house. But uh like I said, my well a lot of things ended up in the garage and, and in the attic because um two years ago my dad's company that was in Dallas uh moved from Dallas to Houston. And so when we moved into our new house that we're going on two years a lot of stuff just like some things made it in the house, some things are in, were in the garage, some things just got put up in the attic, and then we slowly were like, okay, let's get through the boxes in the garage, and let's get through the boxes in the attic. And it was it was one of those things that originally it was on our we had a lot uh, a giant bookshelf in our living room, and it was in that bookshelf in the living room, and then it kind of just got mixed up with every mixed in, I mean, with everything else and. There and then go. that was it. Yeah. So what did you do after leaving college? After leaving college, I worked. Um, I, yeah, I was just uh, in a place where I was like, I don't, I loved being on my own. I loved being independent and having to take care of my own stuff. And so it was kind of, I was in a, I was in a, at a crossroads I could either go home and find a job or I could stay in Austin um, and find a job. And so I was like, I'm going to sit here in Austin and I'm going to give myself three months to find a job and make it happen. <laughs> and so that's, so I went and um, see, I graduated in mid May and by June, maybe the second week of June, I had a job. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to work at this job. I was at the time I was, um, I was in an apartment for, I was on a, I was subleasing the apartment. That's what the word is. I was subleasing the apartment. And so I had till August. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try it till August. If I don't, if I don't like the job or if I can't sustain myself, I'll move home. So that kind of, you know, extended that and I was able to do it. And so then I was like, okay, my sublease is up. Let me see if I can find an apartment. So I found another apartment and I moved and I signed a year lease. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go for a year. I ended up staying there. Well, I worked at that job and then I left it. And then I worked at a, I got another job at a hospital. I was working for the legal department in the hospital. Um, so I ended up staying there. I graduated in 2009. I didn't leave Austin until 2011. So I was there for years, <laughs> just kind of extending it out, sending it out, sending it out. Yeah. And um, and so and in that well, the the time that I was there, um, in March of 2010 that's when um that's when i started my diva diva and then again you 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 you're such a wonderful con <laughs> conversationalist cuz you're going to flow into where did the vision start with mind of a diva so since you've already yeah. opened the door let's, let's i want to walk with you on it so go ahead okay um so when so while i was in at texas state in school um i was I took a, a class because I needed an extra, not an extracurricular. I needed, what did, I'm at a loss for words at the moment. I needed a. Extra credit? Extra, no, it's not extra credit. I needed one of the, uh, like an extra class to take basically okay. Um, okay. because they have you take, they have you take your, either your course classes and then these are classes that you take just to take them. So I took a food writing class. And when I did that, the teacher was like, okay, we're going to make this food writing slash blogging. 
because blogging is becoming a big thing right now. And that's one thing I love about Texas State is that if something was new, then they let then they start teaching it. Because another thing was at the time Twitter was just coming out and people were just starting to find out this is what Twitter is. And so we also learned about Twitter in this class. And um and so we did. So the part of the class was that through, for the whole semester we were blogging, but we had to write about food. And so um, I like the part about eating the food. I wasn't so good at writing about. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just like me. I'm I'm a Food Network. I'm all over the Food Network. So I love yeah. the Food Network. Oh uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That's another thing we have in common. Actually, there is a. We'll discuss offline. There's someone. Definitely, I, I know who's very much into food writing and has her own African-American cuisine magazine. Oh, my gosh. So, I have to find out about that. Yeah, because... we'll, we'll, chat, we'll, chat, we'll chat out there yes. about that. But I'll let you go on that journey. You didn't like writing about food, but you loved right. food. I wasn't really good about writing about, about food. And the reason why is because, um, and I admire people that write about food, is because you have to really do a lot of, it's a lot about, um, engaging the five senses into the writing that makes it good. Um, you know, how does it taste? How does it smell? Um, how does it look? Presentation. And I can talk about it, but when I come to writing about it, it's just like that pen's not moving. I'm just in there like, uh. <laughs> and so um, that's good stuff. I, I I passed the class, so I made that happen. But. Um, my, the thing that I really got out of the class was write, was blogging. I really liked blogging. And so um, I started out saying, okay, now that the class is over, I want to still do blogging, but I don't know what. And I thought, well, let me, um, let me start out with a blog about stuff that I like to write about. So Makes I was like, sense. so I started out writing about TV because I love I love TV and I love TV shows that have good storylines. So if you have a good story, I'm hooked. Okay. I'm, I'm hooked on your show. Stop, stop, stop right here. So what are some of your favorite TV shows, either current or all time? Oh, man. See, there's so many shows. So um, I'm going to start off with my show that just ended. I love The Office. Okay, yes. she's She isn't... She is an uh, office junkie. I am. I have all the season DVDs. I, could, I don't uh, want to pull them out, but I love The Office. You're allowed to. It's your show if you want. <laughs> I will because, I mean, I'm, I it's have them. Go, man. Go okay. for it. Let me – I'm going to move the camera around. Oh, good. So I can. Very good. She's really making – I'm know, making it my she, own. She's going on. She's going on like she's a veteran of a Google Hangout. And she's a <laughs> One man, her first this live is, hangout. So she's just a vet, she's swinging the camera around, pulling oh, out yeah. yearbooks, things like that, awards and all that. So all right, <laughs> so, I know I have I have stuff everywhere. It's crazy, but so here is the office, and I'll tell you why I'm a big fan because um, because the office makes me laugh, and my my day job is what I call it. A lot of the things that happen at my day job, some of those instances I see in the office, so that makes me laugh a lot. And um, I'm a big fan. I love love stories, how they have the love story between Pam and Jim. So there's Pam right there, and then there's Jim on the end. So um, I love the Pam and Jim storyline, and it's just great. So I'm an office fan. Um, I like... A show that's not on anymore, but I'm, that I'm kind of mad that's not on is Veronica Mars. Um, Veronica Mars is a great show. I just look, and that one is about uh, a girl. She, her best friend dies, and her dad is a private eye, and so she uh, is trying to discover what happened to her best friend. And so um, I just love how that story just goes. How she goes from. Um, you know, first she's, she, she just, oh, I mean, there's so many layers to that show, which is awesome, but it's just, you think that this person is the killer, and then it's this person, and then you find out at the end of the show, like, it was this person, you're like, what, where did that person come from? And so, um, 
that show is awesome. Um, another really good show. I thought I watched. I feel like I watch way too much TV. Um, Scandal. I have to mention Scandal because I think that's everybody's favorite show. But well, every a lot of ladies' favorite shows. You know what? <laughs> I have not watched one episode. Really? Because usually I am on air when it's on. I know people say, oh, you can PVR it and all that, mm -hmm. but I haven't made the time to watch it. So here, I know everyone's going to like, all the ladies out there are going to just cut me off, but no, I haven't made the time <laughs> to watch it. So. This is, so people don't understand why um, this fact about me when I tell them about why I like Scandal. I like Scandal storylines. I like how Sandra Rhymes writes, how she moves the story along and then how in Scandal is, has that similar thing with, with Veronica Mars. You think that this person did it, but they didn't because it's actually this person. And so I like that aspect of it. Um, things that I do not like about Scandal that everybody is going to be like, what? I don't. I'm not a big fan of the whole Fritz Olivia thing um, because I feel that if, if a cut for me to want to cheer for a character to be unfaithful to his wife, I have to know why. And they kind of took, like, she's explained it now, but it was just kind of like, I don't see that as a good enough reason for me to be like, yeah, have an affair. I like the story. I'm just not a bit, I'm just not sitting over here. I'm like, yes, Fritz and Olivia all the way. And then I don't think that he's that attractive for me to also cheer for him. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> hmm. I think that there are some other people that could have chose. He's a good actor. It's just that for me, that attraction level isn't there. But I like Scandal. We'll, we'll save your likes and dislikes about Fiscality uh, <laughs> for another show. We'll let you go on. <laughs> and so, um, and so, I think that. Those are like my top shows, I think, because okay. I can't think of any any other shows that I'm just like, uh. Just, um, just, just out of curiosity, were you ever a fan of The Sopranos? I have I have actually not seen an episode of The Sopranos. The only reason I, I mentioned that is the, uh, to, we're doing this live, the lead actor, James Garofino, I believe his name, he passed away this evening at a heart, because of a heart attack. Yes, I saw that on CNN, and I and I was just like, "Wow, that's so sad." If you um, want, I've seen, I've seen other work by him, and I've seen you know him at different award shows, and he was just very. He seemed like a very nice kind of person, from what I've seen, <laughs> and so that's so sad to hear that. All right. Well, were were there any shows you enjoyed while you were growing up? I I was a big TV watcher then. Um, oh, and one one other thing to add before before we do that, I'm a, I like I also like reality shows, but I like decent reality shows. So I like Juliana and Bill, and I like T N Tamir. And so those are my reality shows. That's where I cut it off. I don't watch like The Real Housewives or Basketball Wives. All right. <laughs> and so. Uh, that's okay. it. Um, nope. My old my old school TV shows. Um, I like Boy Meets World, okay. which was one I'm really excited about. They're bringing back the show with Girl Meets World, and so I'm like, yes, yeah, more Corey and Topanga. And okay. so I like that. I like Sister Sister. Um, I like oh Cosby Show. Okay. Love the Cosby Show, um, and then um, do 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 a it's show okay. a, a new show that I like that I I I wasn't old enough to watch this when it was on. I like Sex in the City. I wasn't old enough to watch it then. Interesting. But, but now I watch. But now I'm I can watch it. So, okay. <laughs> um, and so love that because. Not because of the whole love angles and and everything, but uh, I like that Samantha does PR and Carrie is a writer, 
and she becomes an author. So I just love that story of how, you know, her, her struggle of, of doing that. Well, everybody, she's uh, she's giving a whole thing, and sorry for the technical difficult. Well, the visual distraction I had, like my ear th- pop, my earphone just pop out. So hey, it's all part of doing a live thing, so it's all mm-hmm. good. Getting back on the mind of a diva track, then when did the site officially launch? Um, it launched March twenty fifth of twenty ten. Right. Mm-hmm. Was my yeah. first post. And what was your first first post about? I believe if it wasn't a welcome, like hi, hi world, here I am. <laughs> it was a um, it was a post on are women complicated? Mm-hmm. So what what is no? And I guess before I get to, I have another question before the one I was going to ask you to reply on. How long did it take you from mm-hmm. the time you thought I'm going to do this to it actually becoming live? Um, because see, I was writing my t- my entertainment blog for a long okay. for okay. a while, and then I just it, I just got drained doing it because one thing that I realized is that. Um, here I am, and I'm writing this website, but I'm and I'm talking about entertainment news. But people can go to E, they can go to People, they can go anywhere and find this stuff. So there's not really like that thing saying, "Hey, come to me." Yeah, why would, they come, to... why would they come to you? Right, right. And I had readers, but I felt bad because it was like I'm not really. It's not like I'm connected to any of these celebrities, or I'm in California, and so I just kind of. Like the that side is still up, which is funny. But um, I got just drained on doing it, and then I was like, uh, "Let me find something else to write about." So I, so I think that I just, and then I, between the two, it took a good, let's see, a good year. Between it, between it, because I was kind of like, um, what now? (laughs) And so, and so I, I was just, I was like, I love blogging, I love um, writing. I don't want to stop, but I need something else to get me excited about blogging into this website to write it. And so I prayed on it, and I just prayed on it, and. I was like, eventually God's gonna answer me. Something's gonna come, right. and um, and I was. I just remember being asleep in my bed and waking up. And have you seen like those? It's like those old horror movies where people are like sleeping and they just get like. <gasps> like <that. laughs> yeah, one of those one of those aha moments. Yeah, so that's right. how I was. I was just sleeping. I was like, <gasps> okay, write a blog about what. I experience what people people my age experience. Right. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. I, I can totally do that. Simple idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just bam. And so, um, and so, yeah, that was, that was it. And then I had the idea and then I thought, okay, what can I do to, to, um, to get us, to get it started? Um, and I had to think of a name, and I just thought about it and thought about it. Um, and then, yeah, that's what I listened. I was <laughs> listening to. When, when you when you did the URL search for Mind of a Diva, did you think it'd be available? I I felt good about it, okay. but at the same time, I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Um, and I and once I had the name. Before I even started the site and everything, because I, my thing about Mind of a Diva is I've always let let God take control of Mind of a Diva. I was like, this is this isn't me, this isn't the the site, this isn't anything that's Jennifer, right? Or human, humanly done. This is all God. I just I'm just an instrument in it all. 
Right. And, and so I just um, I let I let that take control in, and so he gave me the name. Through I get and I feel like God kind of I don't know if that sounds weird. God spoke to me through a Beyonce song, but <laughs> that's an interesting collaboration. Yes, yes. So I mean, I that's how I got my got the name for it, and so um, I just went with the I went with it and I started searching Mind of a Diva. Um, nothing came up, so I was like, that's the name. And that's the name. And then I started out, um, I, I also like, I'm big on reading. I love reading books. And I love reading multiple books at the same time. So I was reading a book about, um, about new, new things in journalism was the book. And um, they had a section in there about blogs. And that's when I found out about WordPress through the book. And that's when I started, started out doing that. And I looked it up. My first... What my first post was called "Why I Write," um, and I was, and then that was it. After that, I just, I felt, I was like, okay, I was, I feel like, uh, like many people, I was nervous about doing it, and so I was like, I'm gonna try this for a year, and if I still like it after a year, then I'll keep going for another year, and. I just keep doing this. I haven't stopped. It keeps growing. <laughs> what What have been some personal satisfying moments along the journey of Mind of a Diva? Oh man, there's been so so pick, many. Pick a um, few for us. Uh, I would say, I would say that, and this kind of, and this relates a little bit back to when I was doing print, print journalism because I did it in, at Texas State for the newspaper and then also when I, in high school, like I said, for the yearbook. And I was, um, my, one of the things that I love is when you publish something and then people read it and they like it um, and then they comment on it. And so when I got like those first, like those floods of comments started coming in, um, that was just, like, oh my gosh, people are reading <laughs> and they like it and they have things to say. And so, um, and so I like, I love that part of just here, just getting, getting that feedback. Um, nice. I loved, um, so like I said, we were a WordPress site at first. So the URL used to be Mind of a Diva at WordPress. Um, and then in 2011, I launched my own site. So uh, just that whole process, uh, getting my logo together, um, working with website designers to launch mindofdiva.com, our official site, and actually pressing the button <laughs> to let that go. That was just awesome having that. And having and just hearing all of the feedback of it um, was just so much fun. Um, Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, well, we don't got a lot of time left, and I know okay. that one of the things that we uh, you definitely wanted to share about is your your campaign about uh, right, um, your campaign against breast cancer. Yes. Yes. And I definitely want to sh have you share the few remaining moments we have in regards to your concerns about breast cancer, what you're doing in regards to campaigning against it. So how did this concern for this challenging disease come about? Um, I would have to say that breast cancer has been something that's been very close to me since... Uh, I didn't really realize it until later on in life, but my but um, my grandmother had breast cancer, and so she uh, she had breast cancer twice. Um, first time, I believe, before I was born. Second time, um, she was in the cancer treatment center. She was going undergoing chemo, um, and then she later passed away from it. And um, my condolences, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. She, I just remember so many happy things about her. I'm just 
so blessed that we had her for the time that we did. Uh, it happened back when I was in eighth grade. And I didn't understand death at the time as well. Um, but as I got older, you know, I started learning about breast cancer because once you have it in your family, that's something that you need to remember. You need to know um, and be aware of, too, in regards to your own health. And so I, um, I started on my Divideva um, writing just a couple posts about it, you know, know your family history, go to the doctor, know your own health, have, you know, have a healthy diet. And then um, I went on to um, do an event for it last year, and we're getting ready for our, our event this year. And so I do it to honor her memory um, and, and definitely uh, use, use that as a tool to help other women to be aware and also to find a cure because... Um, you know, something that I, something that crosses my mind is that, you know, one, I'm not, uh, that I'm not the only one that has the, has the story of losing somebody uh, because of breast cancer. Um, there's people out there that have the same thing. Um, and then also, I don't think that I'm the only one that if they have a family, well, I know for a fact, because I have a coworker that's dealing, that's dealt with this too, is that when you have it in your family, you also think, Am I going to be next? Who is somebody else in my family going to be next? And so, um, so yeah, that. So what what is the event that you started last year? Um, last year it was it was uh, Divas Against Breast Cancer was the theme. So okay, uh, we did. Um, I did some videos. We talked about um, about number one. We talked about knowing about um, knowing your health. Um, so like I was saying about ch know your family history, what diseases, what um, cancers are in your family already. And um, also knowing your um, knowing your diet diet, what are you eating, um, how that is affecting you. And then also be aware of, uh, you know, extra, having an exercise res regimen, having a, a, you know, just having it where you know your body and things like that. So how to do a, a self-breast exam is something else that we also preached on uh, last year. And when is the event being held this, uh, when is it being held this year? Uh starting October October 1st all the way to the 31st um, I on mind of a diva um, we go through we talk about relationships and career goals and everything else so during the month of October we stop stop our regular regularly scheduled program to uh, to focus on that and this year I'm so excited about it because um, with last year, I did it by myself. This year, I have bloggers and other websites and two awesome partners helping me spearhead this, and we're going to take it to, like, a bigger level than we were last year. And so nice. I'm just... So is I'm there just, any, is anything that we here at the show can do to help? I'm definitely going to get you guys involved and and see if I can get like my partners in with me. We all three of us could do an interview or, um, or something. We'll, we're still in the, I don't want to say we're in the beginning stages. We're kind of like, we're in the trenches right now on everything. So okay. we're, we're still trying to get everything done because we want it to be great. And that's why we're de planning this far in advance for October. Um, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so awesome. And um, I was talking to my mom because um, I, I had a, a meeting today with the ladies and I was talking to my mom and I was just like, I, I was like, this is amazing that here I am. And I started talking about this to honor my grandmother. And now here I have, you know, other people wanting to join in. And I was like, this is people that she, my grandmother never met before 
are doing this and it all started out as something to honor her and so now it's kind of like we have more people honoring honoring her memory and honoring their uh, the ladies that are that are working with me they were saying that 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 this honors people that had in their family too that had cancer um, so that's why they wanted to get involved and I'm just thinking that is just so awesome how that is and I just I know that she's happy uh, about it my other uh, my uh, other grandmother uh, passed away back at, at the end of March um, and she loved my grandma she doesn't know how she did not know how to work a computer she didn't know about the internet but she uh, she came out here when we first moved into into the house we're in now and I was on my website working because I was like yes we got internet again so I'm just going through and she came up behind me and she's like, baby, what are you doing? I told her, I was like, well, baby mama, I got a site and this is what we do. And I showed it to her and she just loved it. So I know that, she, so I, I'm just so happy that she got to see it. And she was just so proud and I just loved it. And um, she got to, to, uh, to see, see it all. And she, my grandmother is one that she gets on the phone and she would just talk your ear off. And she, she's like, <laughs> She's like, she's like, my baby got a website, and she know how to work this computer, and she know how to click on stuff and type on it, and so she just she was telling people on the phone about it, and, it, and that that is another motivation that keeps me going on it, is knowing that she got to see it, and knowing that uh, that the work I'm doing on this breast cancer thing, that both of my grandmother do are just there, and they're just. Go, Jenny, go. <laughs> right. Right. So. Well, a few final things before we uh, end it off here. Yeah. Where do you want, okay, I guess two things. What's the few, a few things. What is the future from Mind of a Diva, and what would you like to see happen with Mind of a Diva? Oh, man. Um, the future for Mind of a Diva, I think, God, God has just gone above and beyond what I could ever ask, dream, or think with this website so far. I thought I would just be sitting here writing to myself. And the fact that I have followers, the fact that I have subscribers, I am doing this event. I have a Twitter chat that we do every Tuesday night. Um, I get to do opportunities like this and be on, ra on the radio shows. I just I would never have imagined it, and so I, I, I can't predict what Mind of Evil will be. I have hopes for it, you know. Um, one thing that I, I don't know if I've envisioned it or if it was God. Or, oh, I know it was God, but um, I don't know if you have IKEA out there in Toronto, but maybe. Yes, we do. Oh, okay, I'm an I'm an IKEA addict. Um, walking through IKEA, they have an office section in IKEA, um, and so when I was putting getting my apartment furniture, I was spending every weekend there. And I walked in one day, and I looked, and I saw this desk, this office desk in their section. And I told my friend, I was like, "That's my desk." My friend's like, "What are you talking about?" And I said, "That's my desk for my Mind of a Diva office." And she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I don't know. I just, that's my desk. And so <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Um, well, there's, when there's no vision, the people perish. So you've got to have vision. Yes. And so we, so uh, we, you know, what God has, so what God has in store for me from here on out, I, I, I've left it in God's hand this this far, and I'm just gonna let Him keep keep going. Um, for me, um, my goal would be to number one. Right, well, I, right now I do Mind of a Diva uh, as my other job is what I call it. I got two jobs. I got my day job, and I got Mind of a Diva. And if, so, if I could do this all day every day I would you and will so, uh, yes I will that's 
I need to, to, to do that. I will do my Navadiva uh, all day, every day, and, and have time for myself. Cause yeah. that, <laughs> we, well, you know uh, what? We better give a shout out to your mentor. Look, I, oh my gosh. Best person ever, ever, ever. Uh, oh, and she's one, and not let me say she's one of like the best people, but she's like on, on the top of my list, and that is Lakeisha Womack. Yeah. I just love Lakeisha Womack. She's my mentor. Um, just she, she like takes my calls <laughs> when I would think that some people would be like, "I'm busy, I got stuff to do." She takes my calls. She takes my text messages. So, shout out to Lakeisha, um, and then Siobhan Mitchell, um, Mark Bailey. They all work with me and just help me out so much. Um, and so, yeah, I, bounce, I bounced a lot of my future ideas off of Lakeisha. And one thing that's really funny is that some things that I never thought that I would do, we talk about. And, I, and sometimes things come out of my mouth when I talk to her. And I'm like, where did that come from? When did I want to do that? And so I think that's another thing, God pushing me in a, in a direction where he sees that he's going to need me to serve. And so uh, I'm really excited to see what comes to pass with that. Nice. And what would you like to see the future vision of your campaign against breast cancer? Where would you like to see that go? My goal for breast cancer would be for there to be a, a cure. For there to be a cure and for there to be a day where I turn on the TV or I'm with some, I don't know, doctor, scientist, whoever, and they're like, we now have a cure for breast cancer, and I could just go and I could be like, if breast cancer comes for me, at least I know that I'm safe. I know my mom's safe, my aunts are safe, my cousins are safe, other people out there are safe, and there ha doesn't have to be any more of this. And um, to go and just see my grandmother one day and be like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> nice. You know what? I will end off with that. I think that's outstanding. To oh, thank end you. Off with. That's fantastic. Before and we didn't. And one thing I forgot, real quick. You didn't get to say my my superwoman thing. We talked oh, about yes. superwoman. Yeah, tell us what you tell us what you are. I I told I was telling um, Dr. Ride that I am. I feel like I'm a superwoman, and what I do is I wake up, I put on my cape, and I just fly. <laughs> with the schedule that I have. I just put on my cape and fly. So. Nice. Well, thank you so much for taking time to share with us that this has been an outstanding conversation. It hasn't been an interview, oh. it's been a conversation. Yes, and I had so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasures are. Just... You know the, the mic and the camera is always open. And uh, before we let you go, uh, actually two things. Okay. This show, the theme of this show is to empower, enlighten, educate, and entertain black men and those who love them. Do you have any words for black men? I love my black men. And when I think of my black men, I'm thinking of my brothers, my dad, my grandfathers, my uncles. So I just say continue to grow, prosper, be leaders. And and you know continue to love God and follow follow his word and his direction nice and finally how can people connect with mind of a diva as I like to say on Twitter we're everywhere okay <laughs> uh, we're Facebook uh, we have a Facebook page so facebook.com slash mind of a diva uh, twitter.com slash mind of a diva um, youtube.com slash mindofadiva and then our website mindofadiva.com so we got it covered yes well, you know what are you gonna come back on the show yes i'm 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 ready to put it on on the calendar now <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about we'll share about that as soon as we go off here because i'm gonna book you i i'm excited i'm ready to do it so yes, I would love to be back. 
All right. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for sharing Mind of a Diva, Jennifer Thank Baker. You. This was so wonderful. And what a smile. I mean, who you get that smile from? Uh, I'm going to say my grandma, Big Mama. All right. She always said she was like, she would call me, uh, her nickname was Jenny Pew. But she said, Jenny Pew looks like me. There you go. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> There she is, Mind of a Diva. You'll get, you have all the contact information. You just watch the uh, broadcast here and it'll also be part of the description of the show. You are listening to the Dr. Vibe Show, the 2012 Black, Wall, Black Web Blog Awards winner as Best International Blog. If you want to touch base with us, I make it easy. Just go to the, D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W, Dot com the dr vibe show all the contact information is there and also you can catch us on the good men project one of the most visited men's sites in the world we are the first podcast to be featured on a regular basis there as we always like to say you're a magnet you're blessed and highly favored you're a magnet for miracles and you're the solution for someone else's problem god bless peace be well and keep the faith bye-bye take care bye <laughs>